Today's agenda, we are talking about HCG, its applications, its utility, and the big question that we've been getting inundated with quite often, especially lately for some reason, can't predict why, but should you be on HCG monotherapy? And one of the big reasons why we are getting this question so much lately is because it seems to be that there's more and more clinics actually pushing an HCG only protocol. So I'm gonna dig deep into when you should introduce HCG, why you should, and should you do an HCG monotherapy protocol? First and foremost, when should you introduce HCG? Well, let me just say this. If you're at a cookie cutter clinic, and here's how you'll know that you're at a cookie cutter clinic, is because if you start on testosterone, typically they usually start you around 200 milligrams a week in conjunction with an aromatase inhibitor, usually an astrazole, and then third component is gonadarellin or enclomiphene or HCG, which the third component they say is for preservation of fertility. Now, if you get with a clinic and right off the jump, this is somewhat similar to your protocol, you know you're at a cookie cutter clinic and therefore you need to find a new provider because quite frankly, if you're at a clinic that starts you off on mot multiple moving pieces, then right from the start, they've already muddied the water before you've even jumped in the water. So if you have a, let's say a negative consequence, how are you gonna know what's working, what's not working? How are you gonna know what's interacting with one another? If there's too much polypharmacy starting right, right initially, then you know that's a red flag that you're at a cookie cutter clinic and therefore you need to move on. So that brings me to the next segment. When should one introduce HCG? HCG typically has three primary applications. Obviously, when guys want to conceive and or maintain spermatogenesis, that's a good point. That's a good time to introduce HCG. Another one is if you having testicular atrophy, that's the obvious second one. And the third, which is lesser known, HCG for some guys, the subsequent guys, it can actually enhance sensitivity. So they use it for sexual purposes. However, that's not something we really want to promote or condone per se, but it does have that benefit in some guys. So those are the three primary times that most people would introduce HCG. Now, my philosophy is that you need to get dialed in on your testosterone. You need to get dialed in on your lifestyle, your training, your nutrition, your mental, physical health before adding in too many ancillaries. Because again, if you have one variable that you're in control of, one variable that you know is stable, and you have a large sample size of time that you can draw upon and say, okay, I'm doing great on this ancillary, I'm doing great on this medication, which the foundation is testosterone, then you can possibly tinker with the idea of introducing HCG. But again, don't just throw it in for the shits and giggles merely because you want to throw it in or merely because everybody else is doing it and all their other clinics are doing it. No, you need to have a justifiable reason. So again, get the testosterone dialed in first before we start adding other stuff in. The third thing about HCG I want to point at is its tolerability. And what I've seen in practice, I'm sure a lot of other providers may be able to relate with this, maybe not. But this is what I've seen is that HCG is either A or is either B. It's very categorical in terms of whether you can tolerate or not. So you've got category A, you've got the guys who take the medication, it does what it's supposed to do, and they move about their life, no big deal. And then you've got category B. These are the people that take HCG and they feel absolutely horrible. They feel horrible, they don't like it, they can't tolerate, it makes them irritable, it just makes them overall feel like crap. And the fourth key point I want to talk about today in regards to HCG is should you do HCG monotherapy? And this is the question that I probably hear the most. We hear this a lot in the TRT forum, but should you do HCG monotherapy? And the answer is a resounding, resounding no, absolutely not. So hear me out. If you have a testosterone deficiency, guess what? You need to take testosterone to supplant and oversee that deficiency. Say like, ser like, say like on your serum, you're cruising 200, okay? You need to supersede that and have symptomatic resolution in order to actually be on a proper testosterone replacement program. Here's the thing about HCG. HCG will shut down your gonadotropins in a similar fashion that exogenous testosterone would. 
So if you're going to shut down your gonadotropins, you're going to shut down your own endogenous production, you need to supersede what you're producing in order to have symptomatic resolution and, and to be on a proper TRT program protocol. Here's the thing about ACG though. It will shut down your gonadotropins, but it will not provide that abundant amount of testosterone that's going to provide symptomatic resolution. There's a matter of time, even if you get on it and you feel great initially, it's just a matter of time for you to shut your own production down. And then you're not actually getting enough testosterone out of that to get rid of your symptoms. Furthermore, like I said previously, HCG is either A, you tolerate it and you move out your life, or B, you don't and you feel horrible. From what I've seen from a lot of guys, especially guys that have gone to fertility clinics, uh, urologists, not saying they're all like that, but from what I've seen guys that have transferred from those types of clinics that are on HCG monotherapy, their numbers are ballpark kind of where they were pre, pre getting on HCG only, but at the same time, they've already shut down their own production. So you're sacrificing your own endogenous production at the expense of getting nothing in return. So if y'all have any questions pertaining to HCG or TRT, hit me up. My intention was to keep this brief, but sometimes that's how life is. I went over. Y'all have a good night. We'll see you.